This Week in IT. Microsoft is promising to support the classic Outlook app until 2029, but not everybody's happy with the new Outlook for Windows. So I take a closer look at the new app and whether you should use it now or hold off. Welcome to This Week in IT, the weekly news show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Windows and Azure. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 60% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 3,590 subscribers. So I'd really love it if we could push that over to 3,600 this week. So if you'd like to see these kind of weekly news roundups and my analysis of the news, then please subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Now, if there's one thing that people get excited about more than browsers, it's email clients. This week, Microsoft announced that it was going to support the classic Outlook app until 2029. But as you're probably aware, Microsoft last year made available in preview form uh, the new Windows client for Outlook, which replaces the old Mail, Calendar and People apps that came as part of Windows 10 and Windows 11. Now, this new client isn't just designed to replace those apps, or that's kind of how this whole project originally started, but eventually it's also going to replace the what I like to call big outlook that comes packaged with the Microsoft 365 apps for desktop that you get, you know, like Word, Excel, OneNote and all the rest of it. You also get this big clunky uh, old classic version of Outlook. And I say old because I haven't used it myself now for, for quite a long time. So what is the deal with this? How is this going to affect people that currently use the classic Outlook app? And what are the problems going to be if you decide to move to the new Outlook client right now? So first of all, nobody is forcing you at this point in time to use the new client app. It's at the opt-in stage. So if you're using the classic version of Outlook, there'll be a little toggle button that you can switch and that will then install the new Outlook for Windows application and make that your default email app in Windows. And that's opt-in, as I said, at this stage, nobody forcing it, but it's going to move at some point, probably later this year, to what Microsoft is calling the opt out phase. So it will become the default client for everybody when it's generally available. And you will have the option to switch back to the classic Outlook if you want to do that or if you need features that are in classic Outlook that are not yet available in the new Outlook for Windows. Then at some point in the future, you're going to be in what Microsoft is calling the final cutover stage, where essentially the new Outlook for Windows application is going to be deployed to everybody, but you won't have the option to switch back to classic Outlook. Now that applies to new users and new devices if you like, but if you're still at at that point using the classic Outlook, Microsoft isn't going to remove it. You'll still be able to use it if you've already got it installed. And that support, at least Microsoft is saying at the moment, will last until 2029. So if you haven't seen the new Outlook for Windows application, it essentially looks like Outlook.com uh, or Outlook for Microsoft 365 in the web. So Microsoft is trying to make all of these different versions of Outlook look, work, look and feel more or less the same so that you've got a very similar user experience. Now, of course, that's where the classic Outlook app really differs at the moment because it's something you know from the past and it doesn't reflect what Microsoft has been doing in the web versions and now the Outlook for Windows app in recent years. So it's designed to kind of bring some kind of unity to all these different versions of Outlook. It's delivered as an MSIX package. So that's the kind of successor to MSI, the MSI packaging file format. Um, interestingly, Microsoft is saying that the new Outlook for Windows is a native application. Now, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch of that imagination, depending on how you define a native application. Of course, like the big uh, desktop apps like Word, Excel, and I believe Outlook 2, 
this is not programmed in something like C++ that's uh, you know, considered a, a native application on Windows, but it uses much like the new Teams client, the Microsoft Edge WebView 2. So it's kind of based on web technologies uh, using a component that's built into Windows and it's actually portable, so it works on the Mac and I think Linux as well, although don't quote me on that. So... <laughs> Native, not native, I guess that's up for debate a little bit. Microsoft is saying that it's a native application. I know that's important to some people. But what Microsoft is describing, how this integrates with Windows, it uses the native Windows integration component. Now, this is a small component that runs in the background. It's updated weekly or more or less weekly using the Office content distribution network. And basically, it's a thin kind of server component that sits there running and allows the new uh, Outlook for Windows to integrate with Windows more deeply in a way that a, a web application might not normally be able to do. So things like file dialogues, getting all those kind of uh, integrated experiences with the action center and notifications. That's how Microsoft is able to achieve this. Now, these kind of rapid updates to the native Windows integration component, Microsoft is able to do because it updates that component, which is the very small component sitting and running in the background, but none of the features in Outlook for Windows actually uh, are updated at that point. Yeah, it doesn't involve updating those features in the application itself, but just in this service component that sits in the background. So if you like, you know, the application itself is the client, this native Windows integration component that sits in the background is the server, and they're loosely based on the same version. So while they may not update at exactly the same time, they shouldn't be a million miles apart from each other in terms of version. Now, Microsoft is saying if you have any problems with the two versions not, not working together, all you need to do is basically close the Outlook app and reopen it and it should automatically update so that the version number with the native Windows integration component is more or less the same and works, although I haven't experienced any problems like that. But I guess that might happen if somebody doesn't close the Outlook app for a long period of time. So if you're familiar with how Outlook works on the web in Microsoft 365, basically you've got a pretty good idea of how the Outlook for Windows app works. The biggest difference, I suppose, is that it supports multiple accounts. So with the app, you can add not just your Microsoft 365 account, you can add a standard you know, consumer Outlook account, you can add a Gmail account, I believe it supports Apple Mail. So you can add your different accounts there and see them all in the same application, whereas you can't do that with the Microsoft 365 Outlook web client. So while that's a big advantage for people who need to work with multiple email accounts at the same time, there are a lot of features in the classic Outlook app that haven't yet been ported to this new Outlook for Windows client. And of course, that could be a big issue if you're using this at work. So the main things that you don't yet have in the Outlook for Windows client are offline support, there's no support for those kind of classic COM and VSTO add-ins that are quite common in the classic Outlook app. So the Visual Studio tools uh, for Office add-ins and the COM object add-ins, you can't use those in the new uh, Outlook for Windows application. There's no support for EML or message files and no support for PST files. And at the moment, there's no support for reordering folders or pop free accounts. Also, you can't drag and drop emails or documents of the application to your Windows desktop at the moment. So while Microsoft is promising to include those features before it becomes generally available later this year, some of those things like PST file support and pop free support are not on such a clear timeline and Microsoft isn't saying exactly when they will appear, but seems to be committing to adding them. I've been using the Outlook for Windows 
application now, I think for about six or seven months, I came from the classic Outlook app and I'd like to share my experience with it. Now, in my mind, one of the biggest advantages of the new app is that it's a modern look and feel. It's very similar to what you see in the web browser with Outlook. And I think trying to, you know, create some consistency between these experiences is really important. Now, at work, we use Gmail. So I got to uh, prefix this conversation with, with that uh, disclaimer. So of course, the experience with Gmail is a little bit different from what you get with a Microsoft 365 account. And the biggest problem I have using Gmail with it is in the calendar part of the application, there's no support for adding Teams links. When you create a meeting, you want to make it a Teams meeting so that the, the link and everything is shared with the people who are going to attend. Unfortunately, at the moment, I don't know what Microsoft plans to do with this. That doesn't work unless you're using a Microsoft 365 account. And of course, because we're on Gmail, I'm, I'm not doing that. So when I create Teams meetings, I have to go back to Gmail in order to do that if I want to include the Teams link automatically there. So that's a big problem in my mind. Of course, that's not going to be an issue if you're using Microsoft 365 for your email. Another thing that frustrates me about this is that, you know, Microsoft is trying to make this an experience that's similar across all of the different applications and platforms. And Outlook on mobile, it offers me a, a great, you know, way of viewing all of my email so that basically the inboxes from all the different email accounts that I have installed in that application are combined. I can view them either separately or combined. And the Outlook for Windows application at the moment doesn't allow me to do that. It doesn't allow me to see a combined view of all my inboxes. And I find that a little bit frustrating. So I have about five or six different email accounts installed there and I have to go through each inbox individually to see any new mail. So Microsoft, please, that really needs to change. Another big one for a lot of people, it doesn't matter to me so much these days, although it would have done in the past, and that's that there's no offline support at the moment. Microsoft is promising to add that before it reaches general availability. And I think that's going to be you know, a big thing for a lot of people. I know Microsoft likes to think that we've all got internet connections all of the time. It's like, well, hell, I would like to be able to read my email and work with it even if I'm offline. Again, maybe an issue just with using Gmail with the new Outlook for Windows app, and this has improved a lot over the last few months, is that synchronization of things like calendar objects was sometimes quite slow and sometimes just didn't work at all. Now, Microsoft does seem to have ironed those issues out, to be fair. So I'm going to just put a little bit of a hold on that one. But you just be aware of that. If you're not using this with Microsoft 365, there are still a few little quirks. So what about the positive side? Well, the first thing, you know, apart from the fact that, of course, you get this familiar look and feel, which I think is great. It's a lightweight application. The search is much faster and more reliable. And I've had no problems with the application hanging or crashing, which sometimes would happen with the classic Outlook. Because it looks like Outlook on the web, it's simple to use, it's easy to pick up. I don't think there's much of a learning curve. Sometimes the classic Outlook looks like a bit of a monster. <laughs> there's so much there, it's not so intuitive to use. But if you're using the classic Outlook in your organization now, probably the biggest thing to be aware of is that there's no COM add-in support, no Visual Studio tools for Office, uh, add-in support either. The new uh, Outlook for Windows is only going to support web add-ins. Microsoft has said that right out of the gates. There aren't any plans at all to add support for com add-ins to the Outlook for Windows client in the future. So there's no sense hoping on that. Of course, Microsoft could change their minds, but I think technically it may be just not possible. So whatever other applications you're interacting with from Outlook itself, they will also need to support this new web add-in plugin model for Outlook going forwards. So if you've got legacy applications that cannot be updated, then obviously that is a potential issue for you with the new Outlook client for Windows. So despite some of the dislikes 
dislike people have for the new Outlook clients. Personally, I like it. I think Microsoft is going down the right direction with the new clients. Have you used it? Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'd love to know. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps us to get the video seen by more people on YouTube and to grow the channel. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now where I talk about the new AI features coming to Windows 11 and Windows Copilot in the Moment 5 update for Windows 11. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.